Hi, I'm John the Anti-Poverty Engineer Termel, and this is part two of PP Power for Poor People, taking care of your bobos for free. Gargle! You're, and of course, that'll flush out the banquet you ate the night before. So, gargle! Urine is kept in the mouth 20 or 30 minutes or as long as possible for gum problems and other lesions of the mouth and the tongue, and I'll swear for that disinfecting. Douche! For any vaginal discomfort and cleansings, a solution of golden seal and urine will give comfort and healing. Eye and ear drops! Yes! Any pain, burning, tiredness of the eyes may get relief with a few urine drops placed into the eyes. A saline solution with all sorts of great chemicals. The ears also benefit greatly if receiving a few drops for ear pain and discomfort. And finally, urine sniffing. This is the most effective way of treatment for any sinus congestion or upper respiratory problems. And if you got a bad cold, oh boy, to get some disinfectant urine down into your nose and your sinuses and into your lungs is a great relief. External application. Urine for external use is preferred to be several days old and warmed up. Old because it turns into ammonia and there's more stronger killer components, I suppose. One, rubbings. Urine is massaged into the body. Rubbings usually are done for any kind of skin lesions, for a simple rash to eczema and cancer. The rubbing may last from 20 minutes to one hour in duration. Don't forget, water, the universal solvent, is a really, really tiny, tiny molecule. And it literally fills in anywhere. Imagine in the a world, it's the smallest ball bearing. So that you leave it and it'll eventually get into any crack and any hole. And what's neat about water is when it freezes, it gets bigger. So it cracks up the area around it. It's a pretty incompressible thing. So by massaging in the urine, it gets into the pores and goes right into the needed area. Two, foot baths. Oh, I love foot baths. Very effective for athlete's foot or any skin problem on the feet. I've seen some pretty impressive results, okay, for foot baths. My mom had two huge infections at one point years ago, and after 20, 30 days of foot bath, it finally went away. So, again, without any expensive medication, it worked. And urine packs. Take a piece of cloth or cotton bass, depending on the application. Soak it in urine and attach it to the treated area. So that's for external use. Now, important. This is neat. Urine therapy, like any other natural healing therapy, will generate a healing crisis. What is this healing crisis? After taking urine for some time, one day, one week, or one month, depending on your body, the body starts to detoxify. Over that period, all the stored toxins and diseases, and this may go back to the earliest childhood diseases, will be released through the body. So there are only a few ways to throw out these toxins, either through the skin, so you might get a boil and some pimples and a rash or whatever, breath or mouth. So the body may also take care of certain viruses by raising the temperature and producing a fever. What it comes down to is that during a healing crisis, one may have symptoms like rashes, sweating, fever, boils, diarrhea, vomiting, headache, and cough. Usually they last only a few hours to a few days. And the crisis one feels, after the crisis, one feels better and a step healthier. It's strongly recommended not to stop the urine therapy during that natural process. Well, I didn't have one. My mother didn't have one. Pauline didn't have one. I don't know anybody who had such a healing crisis. So, The morning urine is the richest and the best to drink. This is particularly due to the greater level of hormonal secretion that takes place in the late night hours when the body is totally relaxed and repairing itself. So that's when the bone marrow is chugging away and producing a lot of medicinal components. The practice of urine therapy is not dose sensitive. One can't overdose. Obviously, the amount of urine one consumes will have a direct relationship to the voracity of any healing crisis, i.e. detoxification, that one might experience in the speed of recovery. And then I didn't have one. I just felt better right away, you know. Over most of the civilized world, blood and blood derivatives are used medicinally with no thought of the distaste or of the distaste usually associated with urine therapy. We utilize packed cells, plasma, white cells, and various other fractions of the blood without pause. Urine too is only a derivative of the blood. We see babies nursing from their mother's nipple and we're not disgusted. We drink cow's milk with no hesitation. 
and we eat cheeses from goats, cows, and other animals, yet we could not think of eating or drinking urine from these same sources. Well, actually, cows are supposed to have some pretty special urine, and you can buy it in India. Seems the four stomachs make them really special. Okay, cow urine. Hmm, I'd like to try that. As we've seen before, urine contains, in its fresh condition, only those chemical sand compounds of the blood in circulation in each of us. If it is not toxic or disgusting while in the blood, why does it suddenly become so abhorrent in the urine? If it is not the color, and it is not since we consume large quantities of wine in the same shades, and it is not the smell, and it is not since we consume large amounts of cheeses with more horrendous odors, and it is not the temperature, and it is not, then maybe it is the taste. Now, I always advise people eat a couple of pears on the afternoon that they're going to try it out the first time. And then later that night, once the pears have a chance to get through them, then they take a couple of ounces and give it a taste and they'll be surprised by the sweetness. And your first time ever may as well be fun and nice. So remember, if you're going to try this stuff, eat a couple of pears before so that it tastes really good. But remember, on the next morning, it's going to be like Listerine. But if you got a sore throat, that's why it's like Listerine and you'll appreciate it. So how many people do you know who've drunk enough urine to be sure of its taste? Well, I have. I do know quite a few. Those who do regularly consume their own urine say that the taste is mild and not disturbing and it's salty like ocean water. Yeah, okay, a little bit salty. But if you have fruit and stuff, it's sweet. Okay, now a good way to undo conditioned behavior with regard to perception of urine is to rinse, gargle, and swish with fresh urine. I call it kidney milk, by the way, all right, so that you understand that it's no different from milk, except it's from the kidneys instead of the mammaries, and it's yellow instead of white, but the same nurturing components. The flavor, consistency, and feeling of the experience will become familiar after a while, and the disgust to which your, to your own body fluids will be a thing of the past. And by the way, the better you feel, the less your urine tastes of anything. And when you eat meat, oh, all of a sudden you can taste the chemicals in it, and you start cutting back on meat, and eating more veggies and fruits and stuff. Saying thank you to your body just before drinking urine will help you realize the value of this golden liquid. Your body produced it for you. Celebrate life and put the urine into a beautiful wine glass. After all, it is the most valuable water on earth. To you, tailor-made medicine. Now, before I go into my testimony, I'm going to read one more article titled Urine, the Holy Water by Harold W. Tut, T-I-E-T-Z. -E Forget it, a, re a review. Forgetting the slang, urine has been called many things, including holy water, the nectar medicine, the very special juice, your own perfect medicine, the golden fountain, largely given these rather tall titles, Amaroli also, because of its unsurpassed healing powers. Now, I heard about it first in 1995 when Maraji Desai, Prime Minister of India, in the Guinness Book of Records on the same page as me, for the oldest man to ever become Prime Minister of a country in his 90s, first told the world that he drank a glass of his own urine every morning all his life and credited it with his good health. Well, I cut that out, stuck it in my journal, because I thought this was weird, you know, drinking his own urine, Ugh, you know. And then a year later, well, let's continue. Um, in fact, Dr. Harold T I E T Z E Tightsey, I suppose, tells us you will not find a more customized medicine and universal cure than your own urine. And Tightsey is not alone with his theory. Together with 600 scientists, doctors, and therapists, he ex attended a world conference on auto-urine therapy in February at Panjim, capital of Goa, in India. And that's when I first heard about the 600 doctors reporting a 73% rate of cancer cures, grabbed my attention, cut that article out, stuck it in my book. And then I told my mother about it, and one day, I looked at her and said, Mom, what happened? You look 10 years younger. 
And she said, oh, you know, I tried, I started drinking my urine every morning, a glass to see what would happen. And I went, wow. I told my girlfriend, Pauline, I said, look at my mother. Well, a few days later, Pauline was on it. And I'm going, wow. So then I'm with the two ladies on it. I had to get on it too. And, uh, you know, originally you try and disguise it, drink it with pineapple juice or drink it with grapefruit juice or something to hide it because you're sort of puked out by it. You know, you think it's waste. But then after a while, you realize it's not because I didn't start with the, with the pears and everybody should start with the pears so that it comes out tasting sweet and you're not puked out and the next day when it tastes medicinal you go oh okay that's not so bad listerine but I can live with it so anyway yeah uh, this was the conference I heard about add these to the estimated 5 million plus Germans practicing it daily and the groundswell of Europeans who are readily joining the throngs and Asians whose urine is being collected and processed by pharmaceutical companies to create urea in skin cream and other byproducts for modern drugs and you begin to take notice and start to contemplate the benefits 